It's a poker game like no other. Some of the biggest players in town mixed in with some of the greatest players from around the world. It's the Party Poker Big Game. We are in the heart of London for this year's big game. Just seven hours of this 48-hour marathon have played out, plenty of dramatic moments delivered, and plenty more promised. If you call, I'll show you the nuts, and if you fold, I'll show you a bluff. You trick me. I'm so mad now. I'm on children. It's only the fourth hand. I just want action. <laughs> <laughs> This is how poker players earn a wage, and so far some have won thousands of pounds, as others sink into the red. Last time, the players at the table included WSOP bracelet winner Jennifer Tilly, cash game player Dusty Schmidt, internet whiz kid Isaac Haxton, WSOP bracelet winner Robert Williamson III, high stakes player Viffer, outspoken online hotshot Luke Schwartz, former Irish Open champion Neil Channing, and top female pro Lawrence Grandine. So far, it has been Jennifer Tilly and Lawrence Grandine who have been winning the lion's share of the cash. Yes, yes, I'm a genius. Oh, I killed a Viffer monster. But it is Viffer who is the most aggressive player at the table. He's been involved in the majority of the hands and has been locking horns with Luke full flush Schwartz. I'm not folding, so. I'm not beating anything, though, still. And for Luke Schwartz, he's just done about 20 grand in that pot. You're only beating a bluff. Man. The biggest news is the new twist in this cash game, an eviction every few hours. And as the votes were counted for our first eviction, came down to Schmidt and Schwartz. I can confirm that leaving the game next is seat number two, Dusty Schmidt. So after seven hours of play, this is how the chips stack up. Paul Marrow, the big loser, and he's left the table. Schwartz down 14,000 pounds and Schmidt down more than 10. Channing and Viffer slow start so far. On the winner's side, great start for both of the ladies. Jennifer Tilly ahead more than 20,000 pounds. Lawrence Grandin up over 17K. For Haxton and Williamson the third, they're just getting it together so far. And now a new player is waiting in the wings to take on this big game. We've lost a player, but that just makes one space for one more from the commentary box. Now to sit down in the big game, it's Justin Bonomo. Just over from Las Vegas, Justin Bonomo is considered one of the best young tournament players. He has recently turned his hand to high stakes online cash games. He brings 20,000 pounds and as he's been commentating on this table, he definitely has some plans for this lineup. I was so rooting for Luke to get eliminated. That's the God see right there. There's just so many different players, a lot of them have a lot of gamble in them. There's certainly going to be a lot of action in this cash game. I think it will be a lot of fun. Cash game getting back underway. And I am now joined by Andrew Feldman, who's also well, itching to get in this really game. But for now, he'll yeah, be watching with me from the box. Andrew, what do you know about Justin? Justin's a very, very good player. He's got a lot of experience, um, one of the biggest internet winners out there and um, he's sitting next to his good friend uh, i'm led to believe isaac haxton and uh, i'm sure he's going to be a very dangerous player to, and he's going to obviously be very fresh and he's got the added information of doing the commentary seeing how the players play so i'd really fancy him to, to have um, a good session here from the way he was talking I mean, up here, I know he likes point. Isaac a lot, respects his game, but I think they're going to be going hammer and tong against each other. And in fact, he's mentioned several times he's going to vote Isaac out if he gets the chance. Well, that's probably because he rates his game so much. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Probably doesn't want him in the game. And that first vote, I mean, I don't know if that first vote was political or not. A lot of the guys don't know Dusty too well. But you know what? At some point, that's going to go out the window. And then these guys are all just going to vote based on personal self-interest and nothing else. Wow. Now, this, this is a dream flop for Viffa. 
bottom two, so and he's got the hand like to get action. Was the highest at like this could be a, a huge pot. Like so Viff has let out for 550. So Channing call, will at least call. And it's how Ax Haxton plays this. Now, he, he, the fact Channing's called, he's going to put Channing on a, probably a drawing hand. Uh, but he's just gone the, for the conservative option and just wants to see a turn. And the turn brings the flush for Channing, but I know Viff is still going to bet. He's definitely going to bet with two pairs here. He's betting for value, that's for sure. Now it's how Channing plays. I think Channing's just going to call because he's going to want, um, he's going to hope that uh, um, that Haxton's, um, yeah, well, Haxton's made a very good fold there. Um, and I think Viff is pretty sure he's got the best hand. But there's a lot of river cards which would slow him down like that. Now he's going to check. It's a horrible card. Channing will bet probably four to five thousand. Right, I mean, you know, among I hope you have a flush. I really hope you have a flush. Uh, which means I think he's calling. Yeah, I mean, Channing does have a pretty tight image yeah. at this in this game. Please have a flush. I won't feel so bad. Oh, he's folded. He's folded. Six seven. Can I see one? Six seven. One one time? No. I can't see one card. You should have done the first move of it. Yeah. Can't see two. I'll show you one. I'll show you one if you show me one. And I wasn't bluffing. I've seen a three before. I don't want to look. But I wasn't bluffing. A three? Yeah. At no point was I bluffing. Viff thought he was betting the turn for value, but the the, the river was a very bad card for for his hand. It was pretty deep. Yeah, let's all just leave and go to Nobu right now and see what happens. It's closed. It's not like America where, where places are open. It's like close at 11, no food after 11. You can tell by that. I mean, if there's ever been a guy who gave away that he lives in Las Vegas more than Justin Bonomo, it's just sort of, first of all, not knowing it's 3 o'clock in the morning. And then, and then having no clue that perhaps restaurants in London aren't all open at 3 o'clock in the morning, especially Nobu. I make it two dollars. Two hundred. So Jennifer opens in the cutoff with uh, Ace King. <laughs> Isaac has got the Jack Ten. Uh, he's just decided smooth call. Everyone seems to be giving Jennifer a lot of respect, except for Viffer. Was he going to lead out? Three hundred fifty. Now Jennifer's at least calling. At least, but she may decide to raise. raise what what would you have done there, raise or call? Uh, I probably would have just flat called because I don't. I, I'm probably going to flat call here and, and see his reaction on the turn. See, against a strong player, I'm just flat calling with Ace King because he now. There, now this is the problem. He's now made the three bet representing a set, and now this really puts the pressure on Ace King. Uh, it's very, very tough. You can't. F you just can't make the fifth raise. You can't. This can't be a good raise. I don't like this. And what you mean by that is she's going to chase out all hands that beat her, and when she gets action, she's in big trouble. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And he's made a fold, and she'll feel very uh, relieved with that. It was a it was a pretty big bluff Isaac made right there. Was he bluffing the wrong player, or was it just yeah, bad think, timing? I think he was bluffing the right player, but Jennifer has just decided to go with her hand. The thing is, she even she has the ace of spades in her hand, so she knows he doesn't have the nut flush draw. Luke getting up and food has arrived. Oh Neil, you and I are eating the same thing. It's, it's, uh... We're experiencing the same thing. Is it delicious? <laughs> well, <what's this>? <laughs> it, it looks. <laughs> it looks like a guy from a building site, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks like he's enjoying it. The players have refueled, and the game is about to step up a gear. Oh, Jennifer! I'll give you um, an extra hundred to show me about her. Hooray! Join us for more action after the break. Still in the early stages of this big game. And it's just one of those things that is obviously going to go on, Andrew. Uh, 
everyone's locking everyone else into a box, and then the people who are starting to play outside of that box that they're locked into, it's going to be a while before the others catch on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it takes a while to know player style when you're playing against new players and their moods. Now comes the time of the evening called protecting your big stack. What happened to eating your fish? All right, I call. That's a surprise. The race was up to 200. No, that's a call, right? I call your, I, ca I call your foolish little Ray. Two players. Okay. I'm breaking one of Phil's Ten Commandments. Don't play out of position with the lift. Ooh. Ah, don't do good. Okay, see if I have a diamond. Hold on a second. About to She'll like the fact she has the ace of diamonds. I check. Check. Do you have a diamond? Yes. I figured it would be good to know. 400. Call. Only because I have a diamond. Okay. 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 So she's betting, hoping that Viffa has a big diamond in his hand. But is he going to raise to represent the ace of diamonds? I mean, he they, might raise. He might do it. He's called. Hey, he, he's he's I, called here to bluff around the river, hasn't he? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine here. Well, they, they've got history. I mean, Tilly has been caught three barrel bluffing him before. Yeah, but she's check called the flop. She's she, her, her hand. She's declared she has a diamond. She's going to bet three thousand. Two thousand. Well, now it's kind of inviting him to raise. It's a very nice bet. Now he's going to raise. Raise up to 6,000. Hello! And uh, she's made the perfect size river bet to get this river raise. Now, this is a spot where have you have the. I don't, I don't like her speaking. This is a, a spot where I would probably do a virtual min raise back. Okay. Raise up to 12,000. Now, is Viffa crazy enough to shove? No. Next time you should believe me. Viffa. I had a diamond yeah, I had too. A diamond. <laughs> yeah, but then you just say it's. What kind of diamond could she have that she's gonna bet into me on the river? And then you think like, I'm not sure, so I'm just gonna check. Be careful. I don't want to open the door. Well, talk about momentum. Yeah. Viffer took the momentum away from Luke, and Tilly's grabbed it from Viffer. She's ahead 32,000 pounds now. That's a great win. While Viffer starting to be a big loser. Tournament directors just announced it's a poker news pot. A thousand pounds will be given to the winner of this pot. What a bonus. No, it's a poker news pot. Get the sponsors, get your sponsors. If it was poker news, they'd be putting more money in and all Okay, I can put my sunglasses on for this. Can we get a song for this? I'm quite looking forward to, uh, to watching this. Nothing gets the action like a poker news pot. I, I think I saw that on a billboard in Vegas. You've just got uh, virtually every player here will want to take this thousand pounds. So. I've already got a quarter in the poker news pot. No, Isaac's out. I'd walk a mile for a camel, but swim an ocean for a poker news pot. I think that was Grace Kelly who said that. Williamson in with a 7-6. I don't think he's going to get a cheap <laughs> cheap showdown with that. <laughs> he, he, limps every, he limps every poker news pot and somebody raises him. But I, that's what he's thinking, right? I mean, there's $1,000 in there. you got to limp for 50 huh? Well, yeah, yeah, to but be fair. And uh, we know Channing will not turn that dead money down. <laughs> and he's, co he's coming in with King 8. I'd say what I think is they should stick immunity into it as well and then and then see how people fight. Thousand. Wow. Thousand. So Jennifer Zero. Has Zero. made a very strong play at this with the, just the ten the wall with ten five. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Well it feels like she's well tuned into what's going on. Yeah, it does. It like does. Yeah, she, she does but unfortunately these two guys don't have any hands Oh no, is he is he doing it? But Viffa is not a guy you want to be. Uh, no, no, he's not. I think it's going to be raised so often that having he's that extra action to do some those plots. spots where it's not raised doesn't oh. actually help. Channing that much. will hate this. Yeah, but he folds. Yay! I want to fucking <laughs> wow. Go on, Jennifer Tilly. 
She made it big in Hollywood as an Oscar-nominated actress. Now she takes poker just as seriously. I think the definition of a professional poker player is you play more poker than you do anything else. And my acting jobs have trickled down to the bare minimum because <laughs> whenever my agent calls me, I'm always off playing a tournament. So I think I'm a professional poker player. And also, too, I'm really competitive, and I always want to do what my boyfriend does. And, you know, when he's going off to Australia or Paris or London to play in a game, it seems really boring to sit at home on sound stage seven and shoot an episode of CSI, so <laughs> it's like, I'm so there, I'm with you. And this game, I don't know, what does it need, Andrew? Just a little bit of a lifeblood injection or what? Yeah, I just need some, uh, like a big all-in showdown just to start loosening up the players because it's, it has dried up a bit and um, it needs another viffa in the game. Everyone here is just playing very professionally. A couple of players on tilt is what this game needs, I think. Hand. Channing's coming with Ace Jack, and, and I really don't don't like this call with two jacks. Why? Because you have to, you have to re-raise against Viffa here in position with two jacks. I mean, what what more are you waiting for? I, I'm happy to to play a big pot with jacks against him, even though you are deep. Oh wow! Look at this. The case Jack and Channing will love this flop. Yeah, is he gonna take a shot? Yes, he is. How does Channing play his ace Jack? Five hundred. Channing's at least calling. At least. And then, <laughs> that's pretty bold. <laughs> but it's waiting. Now the thing is, if he raises, is what does Lawrence do? Now she'll imagine. Oh, she's got a raise. Oh, I, oh, she really should have raised there. Is is there an argument that she may get actually more action by just calling? No, there's no. I'm too sorry. Too many cards there's freeze the action. Too or? many cards. See, Channing hates that Check. card. Absolutely Check. hates it. And she's check. I mean, this is such soft, soft poker. You have to bet. You've got to build a pot with three jacks here. You so, can't always think someone has queen ten or ten eight. So she had the chance to win a massive pot. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say massive, but a lot bigger than it is now. Um, Viff has given up. Channing's probably going to value bet. Yep, he's correctly. Well, he hasn't correctly, but he'll probably bet a thousand. Eleven. Eleven. And good spot for Lawrence to raise here. Oh, she oh, has she to raise. Started to call. Oh, it's so weak. It's so so weak. Channing no, think is almost certain he will be in shock. That he's convinced he has the best hand. Wow. And now Channing's happy because he's only lost another... He can't believe it. <laughs> he did give the Channing eyebrow. He can't believe it. So, I mean, Lawrence thought... I don't think I can raise. She could not get paid off by a worse hand. Is that what her plan was? Her thinking was I mean the given how she's played the hand she has to raise the river you have to raise that's a very very cautious way to play the turn gives the two straights I don't know the turn the turn gives the straight the turn gives queen 10 but Channing definitely bets the turn with queen 10 and even if you're up against queen 10 you've still got redraws it's very, very cautious. Yeah, a couple of people at this table right now saying, heck, give me that hand against Viffer and Channing in position. Yeah. But, uh, well, Lawrence is ahead 20,000 pounds, and I wonder if stack size had something to do with it, that she just, she was a little scared about making that pot too big. But then you, should, then you shouldn't be playing. You should, you should just walk up and say, I've made my money and, and leave. If you're going to be playing scared, then you shouldn't be playing the game in my mind. Viffer starting off another pot, Channing calling, and uh, yeah, Isaac's going to come along with the 8-6. Oh, is he? Is he re-raising? I wonder. Wow. And this is something he's done before. We saw him do it. Same exact scenario with Ace-King. Got everybody to pass. Yeah. But so he's definitely polarizing things here, right? Well, I wouldn't so much say polarizing. He's sort of m widening his range. If he's, if he's going to do it with Ace-King, and he's going to do it with 8-6 off. It's going to be harder to know. Sorry, oh. right, balancing, right? Yeah, balancing his range. He's uh, he's he's basic, and of course, this is brought. Sure, sure, sure. Viffa of Stephly come along with a suited king queen, and Channing has come along with a two nine. So this was a time which it couldn't get through. So how bad a shape is Haxon in right now? Can he oh, win this? Well, he definitely couldn't take a stab at this. 
But Sh I think Vifa was going to at least call one bet with the king queen. He's made a perfect size bet here. Cool. And uh, Vifa's made a good call. But and this this sets up that interesting turn. Will Haxton exactly. go for two barrels yeah. and perhaps three? Or yeah. does he think that Viffer can very well have an ace here? Can Viffer have an of ace Of course here? he can. Viffer can easily have an ace. And he can play ace 10, ace 9 like this. Oh, wow. This is an interesting card because the flush gets there. But uh, um, this is a very interesting spot for Isaac finds himself in. There's 7,000 pounds in the pot. Uh, he's checked. He's just... He's done with it. I don't know if he's done with it. I. Th it's going to be an interesting river. It, if, if the river's a heart, he's going to bet. He might take a stab. No, he's just given up. Check, All check. done. Yeah. And Viffer says, show me, show me nothing, please. And that's exactly what happened. He just couldn't make that 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 second barrel, and it, and I, I think it would have got through. I'm pretty sure it would have. But you can kind of understand why not. I yeah, mean, yeah, I can understand. I can understand. And and the thing is, Viffer isn't really the guy that you want to be uh, bluffing. Oh, now Luke <laughs> has the dream best spot. Race 200, re -raised to 800. So Luke has the aces. Uh, and he's re raised Viffa. And I'm pretty sure Viffa will at least call. It. Cool. Yeah, Viffa's cool with the queen for our hearts. <laughs> oh, this is a very dangerous flop for two aces here. This is not really the flop you want to see. Are you on a pot control mission from the outset here? There's already 1,600 in there. Um, well, 1200. because if, if you're Luke right now, you don't want to stack off here. No, on, right? no way. There's no way I'm raising this flop. So you call and look for yeah, safe turns? I, I would just call here. Just call. You, you, you can't ever raise. And yet, what about the Viffer factor? Well, this is a very nice bet by Viffa because cool. if the turn's a diamond, he can, you know, he can well represent the flush. He can, if the turn's a seven, he can bet. If the turn's a six, he can bet. Luke's so, hating life right now. Well, he he really he wants a deuce. Yeah, he wants a deuce. That's the, it's, a, it's a very good card, but I don't think Viffa's given up just yet. And the implied message, right, wow. is that it could be like a 10,000 bet on the river. Exactly. But he's not folding for 2,600. Schwartz is 20 grand back. He won't. Should he raise? No, no way. There's cool. no way you can raise here with aces. And how often is Luke Cole in the river right now? It all depends on the river card. It's, it all depends on what the river is. That's not a bad card. He's pretty much going to, I think he's going to, he's going to call up to 7,000. Does he have the guts? Pardon he does, me. he does. And there we go. 9,000. Wow. <sighs> I don't know what Luke does. So this, this is, is now very three barrels deep. And what is Luke more, what is he more worried about? Oh, everything. You you, you lose to so many hands. You lose to Jack Queen, you lose to 10-9. Wow, Viffer has put him to the test yeah, it's time and time again. Show me the better hand. Wow. Do you have a better hand? Just say yes or no. I've <laughs> got aces. Have you got a better hand? Wow, that's a very good he call. He put it in! Very good call. He's done it. He reached down. That was not an easy call for 9,000 pounds. That's a very good call. I, I give him a lot of credit there. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I've been able to call with two aces. Is the game back on? Well, that's, yeah, for sure. I think now that's really going to have, uh, that's put Viffo in the hole for almost 20,000. Luke's in profit. Uh, and um, yeah, I think this is now they're really at war. Yeah, well, I don't know what you had, but. Yeah. What did you have? I had two jacks. <laughs> really? Again, <laughs> never, never believe a poker player. <laughs> the players are under extreme pressure as time ticks on. Join us for more action after the break.
Welcome back to the big game here at the Les Ambassadors. Riffer may be the the greatest new character that I've seen for for this sort of game ever. I know he's been around a long time in the U.S., but seeing him here on the European scene, this is going to be a rare treat for us. I really hate this call by Channing <laughs> with Ace Deuce. <laughs> I'd, and, and Lawrence with Ace Five, I just. I'll tell you what I'm, I'm predicting. I, I'm predicting he misread his hand, uh, Andrew. What do you think about that? No. Not I guess possible? I guess he thinks he's got Ace Two of Hearts, but. <laughs> Viffers raised this though, and Channing's just sort of perhaps trailing a guy who he thinks is capable of. Yeah, but Ace Deuce. Well, I mean, what do what do you want with Ace Deuce? I think the Deuce Deuce Deuce. Uh, that, that, yeah, that would be a nice flop, but it, it, it happens about once every 300,000 hands. <laughs> he's just got the implied odds. Just yeah. He's just <laughs> over the 300,000 to 1 mark. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know the exact odds, but I know it's pretty long. <laughs> okay, this is a very good card for Justin. He's turned a uh, straight flush draw. And he... Um, and he's Pass. managed to make um, them all fold with uh, And he makes, I think he wins with the worst hand, but the best draw. 650. It's a good spot for Lawrence to make a play. I mean, only if you know what the cards well, are. She, How can she? Well, she has the ace of clubs. That's the thing. So, and her ace does have showdown value, but I can't see, I, I don't really see this as a game here. In a four way pot, someone's. It's very likely someone's going to be holding a king here. But if she raises here, which she might be doing. Well, I think she is. Now, now this is very hard with uh, because you, your, your draw might be, you might be drawing dead. Well, you, I mean, he can, she can well have eights, pocket eights. And f just from what we've seen at this table, it doesn't look like these guys think she's capable of this play. Exactly. It's the second time she's made one, she's yeah. a high percentage lady. Yeah, well, I mean, the fact she's showed down three jack, you know, he knows that she's playing a very tight game. Really, he should be folding here. I don't like this call because I don't know what I want to see. Because he's, he's check calling if he hits, right? Exactly. You can't value bet here if a club comes. And she thinks she's bluffing. This is quite, wow, I mean this. Ah, he really caught a nice card there. Lawrence has gotten really unlucky here because, yeah. wow, she looks like she was winning this so often. Well, he, he's, what is he, he's thinking about making sort of a blocking value type bet? It seems it, but I really don't like this bet. I don't know what you want to get paid. How much? 3,500, and, and 35. when he's made this sort of bet like, I, mean, I, I really don't. I, I really don't like this bet. Well, because if she's got the guts to, she's gonna fold. But this, what, what do you want to get called by king queen? How? What hand can pay you off? Given how this hand's played out, ace king. She probably re-raises pre-flop. Only really king queen or king nine. Yeah, I much prefer a check and see what she does on the. I don't. I don't know what. It's just. A, it seems a little bit strange that that river value bet. Both my cards were kings, so I couldn't really show one that indicates a bluff. Well, he's doing well here, and most people would have expected that. Justin Bonomo has flown across the Atlantic to be here tonight. He's a top American pro, winning a WSOP circuit event in 2009. I've played a lot of different forms of poker over the years, limit, no limit. I'm probably most known as a tournament player. I've cashed for about two and a half million in tournaments. David Viffer Pete is certainly one of the most fun players to play against. He just creates action for the entire table. There's never a dull moment when he's there. I think sometimes you kind of want the table to be afraid of you. You want them to know that you're the best player at the table. I think in this case, I might want to downplay it a little bit and maybe seem like I'm playing bad, seem like I'm on tilt. Hopefully that way they won't vote me off. This game will go 48 hours and we've had a little bit of a turnover so far, but I wonder who are going to be the guys who go the long haul. Neil Channing right. said he's here for the duration. Doesn't really waste any movements, does he?
So Channing's coming under the gun with King Nine of Clubs and his uh, little nemesis. Wow. So she does have it in her to oh, yeah. to, to re raise. To, and Justin now is right. no. in a bit of a spot here with Ace King. Right, because they have no idea where she's at. Well, if she's flat calling a raise, a raise and a call with two jacks, what's she re raising Channing's under the gun but raise with? It's beautiful. She's, she's playing them like tops. Uh, yeah, but this. And is, Chani, uh, is uh, Schwartz coming in with the Ducks? I think he might do. Yeah, Schwartz is in and Channing's in, so. Well, it's kind of that spot if you're Luke right now, you kind of hope Lawrence has aces, right? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of money in this pot here now, a lot. And, you know, you're risking 650. You're getting quite good odds pre-flop. You could kind of see what oh. Neil was thinking right now. He wanted to fold because everyone hates the King Nine, but he was scared that they would all make fun of him. <laughs> I, I I don't think he can fold there, given. But you, you do. Oh hate wow! Him. Look how look at this. Luke flops his set, and now he is praying she has the aces. And is he leading out? Yeah, he's leading straight out. This is this is a. Uh, well, this, oh, is, this is this a play is really where tough. if she has the aces, he was going to get on. Oh, this is a very nice fold from uh, Channing. A very good fold. And I think that, that I think he's just bet too much here. He's just let out too much. I mean, if Bonomo's thinking about anything, it's that he saw that Luke had a... Yeah, that play went poorly. Uh, I was hoping, like, Viffer would bite and think that I was... Uh, He'll feel pretty. Uh, um, Trying to call the 220. Luke yeah. feels sick. Yeah. But the fact was only only Ch only Channing really had the hand to uh, to pay him, but now? Channing was uh, in the squeeze there. He was moves. he was yeah. stuck behind Lawrence. And that was a ni nice fold there by Channing. It, four people not have an overpair. How does she not have an overpair? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. A lot of players would check there, check raise, go for the check raise. Um, but leading out is a very optimal way as well, because an over pair most of the time is going to raise there, and you can you can just get your stack, you can just play, get your stack in there, because the lead out looks like a flush draw. Is that water for? Can I get one as well, please? Raised to 300 total. She does. I, 300. I do think she's got them a little off balance pre flop, though. I mean, you know, yeah. Bonomo turned over that ace king and was making up this thing about Viffer, but really, there was this thing about Lawrence going on, wasn't there? Maybe, but to be honest, ace king to a rate, an early position raise and an under the, yeah. and a re raise isn't always, strong. isn't always a four bet. Well, they've lined up to call Grandine here, Bonomo, Bonomo and Haxton uh, in like 10 pins. Spades come out. We could see a big pot between... Uh, wow, this has hit everyone. But it's hit um, Grandine the, the, the most. I think she's going to... She's checked. So this is going to go check, 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 check then. Check, check. Yeah, check, check, check. It's no one has a clue where they are apart from Lawrence, who I think was check raising. Now she's probably going to bet 800. 300. 300. Four. And is this giving him the flush draw? Oh, well, he's at least calling. I think he's just going to call. Cool. And it now this puts, um, uh, he's now getting, points. he's getting five and a half to one. Almost the right price. But to hit his 10 or king, queen, but he folds. If a diamond comes, he could be winning a big pot. Oh, or a jack. Best now possible this card for Lawrence. Yeah. 1,000. Now, does he call or raise? Does he, if he puts her on ace king, he may want to raise. It's very hard to put her on ace jack because she bets so small on the turn and check the flop. I mean, because Bonomo would be sort of the kind of guy who... If he calls here and is ahead, he's going to really get on yeah, himself yeah, for yeah. not getting value out, right? Yeah, he's raised. There we go. And 
And I, I can understand his 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 reasoning behind that. Is he good enough to get off this oh, for the re Oh, definitely, definitely, of course. She should now make it 10 and he'll fold. There's no way he can call a, a third raise. She's like the Black Widow spider. And now... She's just going through, how much do I re-raise? I hope she, she makes it 10. And then he'll feel how much more. more. Yeah, that's a very nice re-raise. But I can't see him calling, calling this. Well, now it starts to get to the point right now where you can only beat a bluff. And or you can beat the same hand, but she will never do this with Queen Jack. She'll just call. Is he a bit sick about this? Yeah. But good enough to pass. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, it's hard to put her on the hand she's representing because she, she checked the flop and bet 300 on the turn. But equally, I don't think he's going to think she's strong enough to make this 8,000 on a bluff. And Queen Jack can only beat a bluff now. There's no hat. There's just nothing. There's nothing you can beat. It's you, your hands. You can't beat anything now. She, she never does this with Ace King, Ace Queen. He's looking very lonely over there right now, Justin Bonomo. Is it? He's folding. He's got that look on his face, you know, where you start to think, if yeah. she's bluffing, she's, I'm she's sunk. If she's not bluffing, I'm sunk. <laughs> He made the right move. Yeah. Marty, saddle up for fresh horse. I'm going home. I thought we were seeing who could stay the longest. I've seen this story before. <laughs> it always go, ends with me going home crying. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it ends with me going home crying. Uh, I think uh, Jennifer's done. The baby's not going to cry anymore. All right. Well, not only will Jennifer Tilly be taking her bright personality, but also nearly 50,000 pounds off the table, profit of over 33 grand. She beat up on everybody pretty good, but especially Viffer. Good night's work. Yeah, I'm happy with how I played, and I'm going home now because I don't have the stamina that these guys have. I don't have the testosterone. I felt myself fading, and I've been in cash game sessions before where I've won a lot of money, and then I start to get tired, and it all goes back. I mean, it can change on a dime, and I just saw Vifred reloaded. He was just waiting for that moment because he can tell when I turn, <laughs> and then he's like, give me my money back. So I thought it might be good to go home tomorrow and go shopping at Harvey Nichols, and maybe I'll come back the day after tomorrow. Now there is an empty seat, and after the break, internet hotshot Sam Trickett steps up to the felt. Welcome back to the Party Poker Big Game. In the last few hours, there have been some massive pots. Jennifer Tilly has just retired from the game with over 30,000 pounds profit. And now, the dynamics of this table are about to change. Jennifer Tilly has cashed in her chips and gone home. It leaves a space at the table to be filled by none other than Sam Trickett. Sam Trickett, well-known face on the UK tournament scene, has lots of results, but he's yet to make his mark on televised poker. Brings 10,000 pounds and this a real chance for him to make a statement. I think the lineup right now um, is probably the toughest it's been since the game started. A few good players in there. Um, uh, I'm probably going to not play too many pots with Luke, Luke Schwartz. I think he's a very, very good player. I'm going to put you in a lot of tough spots. Um, also, I know Isaac Haxon's a very good player. I haven't seen him play too much, but heard his commentary and I think he's got a very good understanding of the game, so maybe they'll stay out of them too as well. Joined in commentary by Andrew Feldman. And Sam Trickett, looking around this table with trepidation, you can understand Haxton and Bonomo are no easy targets. Neil Channing putting an extra 5,000 pound top up on. He's here for the long haul, doesn't want to be short stack. And Andrew, I mean, Sam's a player, but this is a big game. He doesn't play the, the top stakes online, so he's not internationally known, but in the, in the UK, he's had some very good results. and. Uh, He's got a, a lot of players who have a lot of respect for him. He's uh, yeah, like a very aggressive player. He's got a lot of moves up his sleeve, and uh, um, I'm, I'm sure he'll be fresh and raring to go and be willing to give lots of action. Williamson just flat called to induce Viffa to raise. 
Um, and he's limp raised, and he's got Viffa to call the re raise with eight deuce of okay. clubs. Williamson's trap has worked to perfection, and he's. Nah, unfortunately, Viffa has totally missed. Has a couple of backdoor draws, but I can't really see Viffa calling this. Yeah, it's a very nice size bet by Robert, but um, he might float one off. He's certainly looking tempted. Yep, he has. He wants to see a turn. So he's hoping the turn brings a club before. He's kind of hoping that Williamson checks a turn. Yes, right? and he's also hoping Williamson checks a turn, which he might do. Now he's made three aces, oh, this could which be he has. Disastrous for now, him. will Viffa fire? Well, I mean, he's turned this hand into a big draw, right? I mean, if you pick up the, the gut straight draw on the turn from air, you've kind of Ooh. found a big draw. <laughs> yeah. Well, he had a few backdoor draws there. Unfortunately for Robert, I can't see him checking. It would be great if he could find that check, but I can't see him doing it. God, Viffer would have, would have destroyed him if the forward come on. Yeah, that's it. St still was a reasonable chance for Robert to take anyway. The no, for sure. I mean, it's so hard. When that third, when that ace pops, you know how hard it is for Viffer to have a hand to pay you off with. And um, he's deciding to hope that uh, Viffa was floating and he was going to represent the ace, but Viffa didn't fall for it. And unfortunately, um, Viffa is not going to do anything too crazy. And it's pretty hard to, to bluff a guy who's put in over 50% of their stack as well. That's another thing. Lawrence Grandin counting her stack. She is leaving after a few more hands. Nice night's work for the French Canadian. Oops, seeing a yawn from uh, Isaac Haxton's corner. He may not be long for this game, Andrew. Yeah, he's looking pretty tired. He, he might, he might want to come off for a, a sleep. So the first hand for Trickett with two tens. Okay. Re oh, re-raise from Viffa just with the king deuce of club. So that yeah. just shows how much respect he has for Sam's opening raise. Well, it's the very first time Trickett's put chips yeah, in the pot, isn't it? Yeah, it's interesting, this. Now, I can't see Trickett folding. Right, but if, if he, with his stack size, if he, if he puts the four bet in, is it all of a sudden? I, I can't see how he, he can, really. It's so hard to play two tens to, if you, I mean, what, it's so difficult. I think you can only really flat call unless you're convinced Viffa, oh, okay, well, this is a dream for Viffa. He's flopped the flush draw, but Trickett may check call this. Well, he kind of has to, doesn't he? He doesn't have to. No, he doesn't have to at all. No, n not, at, not at all. He can easily fold here because, you know, Viffa can easily have aces, kings, queens, you know, ace, jack. But I think he's going to call once. But the problem is, is Viffa's firing pretty much any turn with his flush draw. Right. That, that's the thing. Viffa is not slowing down. Very, very unlikely is he going to slow down. Well, uh, the only card he could slow down on is if the board pairs. But I still think Viffa's going to fire here. Uh, he's made a conservative check. I'd have liked to have seen him bet. Oh, well, this is now a dream bluffing card. But Trickett knows that. And he might find it somewhere in his heart to call. Viffa will bet two and a half thousand here. Yeah, 2,400. But Trickett knows that he's going to always bet this ace. So Trickett kind of has to... This is hard. This is it's, really it's very tough, tough, right? This is all depending on what you put your opponent on. But he's going to make a good call. Yeah, he's wow, calling. Great call. Yeah, it's a good call. It's a fantastic call. 
good. Now, Trick, um, Viffa will feel sick he didn't bet the turn. And that's a good start. Very nice start for Trick it. Absolutely is, and he showed an grand. awareness of what the game dynamics are. Number one, Andrew, and number two, that uh, he doesn't mind looking silly on TV. No, I mean, it's not. Even if even if it turns over ace-king there, you're not looking that bad because you're playing the player. Lawrence Grandine, 20,000 pounds up. She's had a great time here, and uh, she has, between her now and Jennifer Tilly, They've just taken a little 50,000 pounds off the, the guys. At the perfect seed, aggressive player to my right and uh, less aggressive player to my left. Uh, I was surprised, some internet pros, I thought they would be way more aggressive. And uh, there was not so many 3-bet and 4-bet going on, so oh, that was uh, good. <laughs> this is how things stand at the moment. With Lawrence leaving the table, she'll be taking 20,000 pounds profit off. That's going to leave a lot of guys sitting around wondering where the money's gone. David Viffer, big loser so far. Stamina, concentration, skill, a little bit of luck, and sheer determination have gotten our players through the first nine hours. But there's a whole load of poker left ahead as they push themselves to the limit in the party poker big game. We are about to see some big changes at the felt. Join us next time when the World Open champion, Phil Locke, joins the lineup in a bid to win thousands of pounds. It's like a mental war where there's no weapons except your brain fighting with probability curves. It's beautiful. The war will commence here at Les Ambassadors.